Hello and welcome to an overview of VISTA project progress reports. This is the first in a series of trainings in Litmos designed to help CNCS field staff review VISTA project progress reports. This session was recorded in July of 2020. This session focuses on the VISTA project progress report, or PPR. We'll learn about what the PPR is, why we use it, and how often it is submitted. We'll talk about how you can support the success of new projects and even some existing ones by ensuring they know how to access the reports, that they have reporting mechanisms in place, and that they fully understand what they are reporting on. And lastly, we'll discuss the various components of the PPR. Please note that there are two additional recorded trainings that touch on the technical aspects of scheduling reports and reviewing and documenting the review in eGrants. The majority of this information can be found in Chapter 5 of the VISTA Desk Reference, so please refer to it as needed to help you manage progress reports. So what is a project progress report? A VISTA PPR is similar to progress reports in other CNCS programs. It's an instrument used to collect information from VISTA project sponsors during a given reporting period. It serves as a mechanism for projects to document their accomplishments and challenges, as well as the technical assistance needs. It provides CNCS field staff with an opportunity to review what's going on at the project, highlight significant accomplishments, and provide training and technical assistance. As a federal agency, CNCS must ensure that VISTA resources are properly managed and expended in alignment with federal statutes, regulations, and guidance. We have an obligation to make sure that taxpayer money is used properly and efficiently, and you are responsible for ensuring program quality and for providing technical assistance as needed for VISTA sponsors. CNCS fulfills these responsibilities through a range of oversight and monitoring activities, and the progress report is one example of this. PPRs allow you to check for red flags or inappropriate activities, assess progress, and determine what feedback, technical assistance, or other interventions may be necessary. We'll talk more about feedback during part three of the progress report series, but it's important to note that not all PPR feedback is corrective. In fact, this can be a great time to acknowledge a sponsor for a job well done and congratulate them on their success. The question of when for VISTA progress reports is multifaceted. First, unlike with other programs, you must create and schedule the progress reports in eGrants in order for your sponsors to have access to them. It doesn't happen automatically. It's best to schedule the PPR immediately after you award the Memorandum of Agreement so that you do not overlook this critical step. Chapter 5 of the VDR contains detailed instructions for how to schedule these reports in eGrants. And part two of this PPR series in Litmos walks you through scheduling the reports. The Portfolio Navigator can help you to see what reports are due or overdue in your portfolio. Once you have scheduled the reports in eGrants, this could be an easy way to help you see when reports are due. So let's continue on to this question of when for VISTA progress reports. If you are responsible for scheduling the PPRs, when exactly do you need to schedule them? And what are the due dates? All VISTA sponsors must complete two progress reports. That includes one progress report light semi-annual and one progress report annual. Please note that before 2020, first-year sponsors were required to complete progress reports quarterly. However, that is no longer the case and this change will be reflected in updates to the VDR later in 2020. In the meantime, please use VISTA's supplemental PPR guidance that's shown on the screen. To access the supplemental guidance, go to VISTA's SharePoint homepage. From there, click on the Program Impact and Operations link found on the left side of the screen. That will take you to the Programming Unit's homepage. Scroll down until you locate the Project Reporting and Monitoring section, and from there, open the document called Scheduling PPRs FY 2020. 
This document walks you through scheduling reports and e-grants and includes key information on dates and process steps. So back to this question of when. We know that you will schedule two reports, but how does that work? As in other CNCS programs, VISTA progress reports will always be due from the sponsor within 30 days of the end of the reporting period. Reporting periods coincide with federal fiscal quarters, and quarter one is October through December, quarter two is January through March, quarter three is April through June, and quarter four is July through September. However, with the VISTA program, because the Memorandum of Agreement, or MA, coincides with VISTA pay periods and not federal fiscal quarters, it can be a little more nuanced than just sticking to the quarters. Let's take a look at some real life examples. Let's look first at a first year project that has 15 month memorandum of agreement or performance period. We know that the sponsor typically spends the first three months of a new project getting things set up. This likely includes participating in sponsor orientation, completing VISTA assignment descriptions, and recruiting members. You will likely be in frequent communication with the project during this time, providing feedback on these items and helping them anticipate what's next. Because of that, those first three months are wrapped up into the next six months, creating a nine-month performance period. In this example, a new first-year project has an MA from March 29th through June 19th of the following year, or about 15 months. The performance period for the PPR light semi-annual would be March 29 through December 31, or about nine months. The report would then be due 30 days later. For the project report annual, the reporting period would be the entire length of the MA, from March 29, 2020, through June 19th of 2021. Because a reporting period cannot be longer than the performance period of the MA, it concludes when the MA period concludes. The report due date is 30 days from the project end date. Here is an example of a project in its second year. A project in year two or beyond will have an MA that's closer to 12 months than to 15. That means that each performance period will be about six months. So here we have an MA from June 20th of 2021 through June 18th of 2022. The first performance period would be from the beginning of the MA or June 20th through December 31st. The report due date would be 30 days later, making it due on January 30th. The second performance period would be from the beginning of the MA until the end of the MA, so it covers the entire project period from June 20th of 2021 through June 18th of 2022. The due date would be 30 days after the end, so that would be July 18th, 2022. Let's talk now about when you must complete your initial staff review and assessment of a PPR. Your due date is 45 days after the PPR was submitted or 45 days after the sponsor's PPR due date, whichever is later. This works to your benefit, so let's take a look at some examples. Let's say we have a sponsor with a reporting period January 1 through June 30th, with the PPR due on July 30th or 30 days after the end of the reporting period. In this first example, let's say the sponsor submits the PPR early on July 15th. Because the PPR due date of July 30th is later, you have 45 days from the PPR due date to review this report. So in this example, your review would be due on or before September 13th. In the next example, let's say the sponsor submits the progress report late on August 15th. In this example, you would have 45 days from August 15th to review the progress report. So that would mean September 29th to complete your review. You do not have a shorter review period because the sponsor was late. You still get up to 45 days from the actual submission. 
The VISTA sponsor, per the Memorandum of Agreement, is responsible for submitting the progress report. Typically, the designated project director assumes this responsibility on behalf of the VISTA project. In multi-site projects, the project director should be coordinating data collection efforts with the host site supervisors and members. While we want to ensure this coordination happens, a VISTA member should never be responsible for submitting a PPR. And this includes VISTA leaders. VISTA leaders may sometimes play a valuable role in helping a project streamline data collection efforts from sites and members. However, a leader should not be tasked with the actual completion and submission of the report, as this is a responsibility of the project staff. So you, as the portfolio manager, are the primary audience for the VISTA PPR, and you play an important role in reviewing it. However, the VISTA project director may wish to share the completed PPR with other staff from the sponsoring organization or with community partners and leaders and with the VISTA members themselves. This can provide a detailed account of how things are going with the project and be a great way to keep others informed. In addition, VISTA headquarters reviews and pulls information from progress reports from time to time. If headquarters staff need an example of something to share with agency leadership or members of Congress, we may first turn to progress reports to see what we can find instead of reaching out to regional offices with a request for information. So how is all this done? Well, sponsors complete and submit VISTA reports in eGrants, and you will also complete your review in eGrants. When the sponsoring organization created their application, they identified project goals and performance measures, along with data collection instruments and methods to help them report on the, those performance measures. The information originally provided in the application serves as the basis for the PPR. However, there are a few key things that can help set a sponsor up for success when it comes to completing the PPR. First, to support the submission of quality data, all VISTA projects should be mindful of creating data collection processes that will start on the first day of the project and that satisfy the data collection protocols for each CNCS national performance measure. Key definitions and data collection protocols can be found under the application materials on VISTA's Sponsor of VISTA webpage, which includes other items such as the concept paper instructions and the current year's guidance. If you are developing a project or working with a new sponsor, make sure they are familiar with these key definitions to help us collect quality data on VISTA projects. Please note that while this document references FY18 and 19, this is the most recent document and it reflects the current performance measures available for VISTA sponsors. It is also essential that VISTA sponsors understand the importance of planning and collaboration in data collection and in completing progress reports. As we've learned, sponsors should be thinking about data collection and progress reporting before the project is even awarded. However, it's possible that you will be managing a project that has not yet created a plan for data collection. If you are working with a multi-site project, it's essential that they inform each site what they are responsible for reporting on, per the approved application. They must also make sure that they are aware of key definitions we discussed and any data collection instruments the sponsor wishes to use. Additionally, whether the project is multi or single site, it is very likely that the sponsor will want to engage the VISTA members. And while we know that VISTA members and leaders are prohibited from completing the report, they can play a very valuable role in relaying information to the VISTA project director. Many projects require monthly or bi-monthly reports from their members, which allows a sponsor to easily tally project information for VISTA's reporting requirements. This, of course, requires both planning and collaboration to carry out. And lastly, to set a project up for success, you will want to ensure your VISTA sponsors have the PPR instructions handy. These can be found on the VISTA campus at the link you see here. And these detailed instructions walk sponsors through 
how to complete the PPR. They include screen-by-screen -screen instructions, tell sponsors what to include, and walk through the various e-grants steps. I strongly recommend that you also review these to become familiar with what your sponsors will see when completing a PPR. The general objective of PPR review and feedback is to promote continuous improvement of VISTA projects. We'll dig into the specifics of feedback and the review process during the next part of the Progress Report Review Series. For now, it's good to know that there are three things you'll be checking when reviewing a progress report. First, you always want to make sure the PPR is complete. Second, you want to check to see if there are any inappropriate activities mentioned and if the activities and accomplishments reflect what you know about the project. And third, you will want to conduct a deeper analysis of project management and performance. Do the numbers reported seem realistic? And is the project on track to meet performance measures? If the project is not on track, do they discuss what, why that may be? Is there technical assistance or training you can provide or direct them to? And did the sponsor report on performance measures correctly, or does it look like they need a better understanding of performance measures? These are all things you'll be looking for when completing your review. For more information on completing the actual review, refer back to the VISTA desk reference. These are the various components of a PPR, and we'll talk briefly about each. VISTA expects sponsors to support VISTA members professional development. This section asks sponsors to indicate the number of hours of member development opportunities that were provided to VISTAs, leaders, or summer associates during the reporting period. The demographics section asks sponsors to provide data for their project on various standard questions, such as the number of community volunteers recruited or managed, as well as the dollar value of cash and in-kind resources that were leveraged during the reporting period. The narratives provide additional information on project challenges, accomplishments, and technical assistance needs that the sponsors are not able to list elsewhere. The narratives include a separate text box for each item that you see listed here. Lastly, we have the performance measures, and this section is customized for each sponsor in eGrants based on the performance measures identified in their project application. The performance measure information is organized by site and by capacity goal. So you may be wondering, what about that thing called the VPRS? The VISTA Progress Report Supplement, or VPRS, is completed on an annual basis by all sponsors. All sponsors report on the same 16 metrics for the same reporting period and the reporting period is always the fiscal year. For example, for FY20, sponsors will report on the accomplishments taking place October 1, 2019 through September 30th of 2020. This allows VISTA to roll up the data from all of our projects to report to Congress and other stakeholders. For more information, visit the VISTA's Program Impact and Operations SharePoint page and check out the VPRS section. In the fall, VISTA will share additional information about this report with you. In the meantime, please make sure your sponsors are aware of this critical report. Lastly, here are some great resources to help you better understand and navigate progress reports. As always, the VDR is a very detailed and helpful resource, and as I mentioned, we have some supplemental guidance on VISTA's SharePoint page for FY20. I also encourage you to check out the other recorded trainings in Litmos, which dig more into scheduling PPRs and completing the review in eGrants. And we also discussed a couple of great resources, not only for VISTA sponsors, but also for you. These include the PPR instructions available on the VISTA campus and the performance measures definitions available on the sponsor page of VISTA's public website. In summary, we set out to explore and develop a better understanding of the VISTA PPR by addressing some of the what, who, why, when, and how questions. 
We also talked about some ways that you can help set your projects up for success so they can complete their progress reports well and on time. And finally, we quickly talked through the various components of the PPR. Thank you for completing an overview of VISTA project progress reports.